So when you first install VS Code, you're going to have an editor that looks sort of like this. And that is because you have not customized any of the specific settings. So I'm going to take you guys on a journey so that you can make it go from looking like this to something that you feel more comfortable with. And for me, this is what that end result is. Let's get started with understanding how VS Code settings.json works and how you can update it. First, I want to mention that there's two specific places where you can change your settings for Visual Studio Code. Now you can press Command Shift P on Mac or Control Shift P. And once you start typing settings, then you're going to notice these two things under preferences. So you can open the user settings or you can open the settings.json. Now this is the settings.json file that I already have open here. And this is what the just the generic uh, settings section looks like. Now, if you're a beginner, I highly recommend, you know, starting off from here, but you're going to eventually want to transition into using the settings.json file. And the reason you're going to want to use this is because you can easily copy and paste these settings into GitHub. And so that if you ever get a new Mac or a new computer, all you got to do is install VS Code and copy these settings. And as soon as you do that, you're going to get the exact editor settings that you prefer. I just want you guys to know that, you know, both of these exist, both of these mean the same thing. So if you change the font size inside of the settings here, it's going to get automatically updated here. And of course, it'll happen vice versa. So if you change the font size here, it's going to get updated here. So for the rest of this tutorial, I'm just going to look at my settings.json because I think it's easier to explain what's going on by changing it here than it is to sort of scroll through all of these things here. Let's take a look at my editor settings. Now I do want to mention that I have some other settings here that I'm not going to go over because they're specific to the Vim extension that I use. Maybe I'll go over them at some other point. So basically we're going to start right over here. I disabled breadcrumbs. Now, if you don't know what these are, um, these are the thing that appear at the top right over here. And for me, I have never personally used these breadcrumbs. So I just didn't really see the use in, you know, having this open. Then of course, you know, default editor font size is 14. So the editor word wrap is pretty interesting. So notice how if the line gets longer and longer, it's going to start automatically wrapping the words onto the next line. Now, if I had this set to false, then um, this thing would just keep going on to the right forever. And for me, that's not a good feel for the editor. So that's why I have word wrap on the line numbers. Again, that's just this thing right over here. Format on save. Now, this is very important, especially if you're a full stack developer like me. So format on save uh, goes hand in hand with this editor default formatter, which is the prettier VS Code version. So what this does is whenever you save, it's going to automatically format the file. So say I have a, a file like this and, you know, it's a little bit unformatted because I was just typing really fast and, you know, I just didn't get the chance to format it. As soon as I press command S to save, you're going to notice that all that stuff goes away. With Prettier, I can actually specify a Prettier file and VS Code is going to use that Prettier file uh, to format the specific folder. So if I specified a prettier file inside of this project directory, then VS Code would be using that. But right now it's just using the default prettier. Hover enabled, as you can see, whenever I hover over anything, it sort of starts explaining what everything is. Font ligatures goes hand in hand with fear code. So uh, if I press like equal, 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 oops, you can notice that, you know, it made everything look a little more stylized and I just think that looks cool. So that's sort of why I have the font ligatures enabled. Minimap, this is something that is set to true by default when you first install VS Code. That's this thing right over here. But I set it to false because most of the files I work with are not that long, maybe a couple hundred lines. Oh well, yeah, and, and these are just a couple of other uh, things that just worked well for me. Now this next setting, which is uh, setting the compact folders to false is pretty hard to explain. And honestly, it doesn't really happen to me in most cases, but um, let me show you guys what I mean. So I'm going to set this to true and I'm going to open this section right over here, which is if there's uh, if there's no files in a specific folder, then it's just going to sort of make it compact like this. But I didn't like seeing that. So I just set that to false. 
And so what that does is it makes sure that the folders are rendered properly uh, on the sidebar. Now this is probably something that you don't want to do if you're maybe working with something like Java, which has a lot of nested folders because you know that's just going to make this directory structure look really messed up. But for me, I didn't like seeing that, so I kind of just set it to false for now. Uh, the next thing here is trim trailing white space. So this happens on save. So for example, if I add spaces here, and then if I save the file, you're going to notice that you know the spaces get removed. And files.exclude, this is something that is useful in my case with TypeScript files. So what this is doing is that if I have a JavaScript file and a TypeScript file as well, it's just going to sort of hide the JavaScript file from the uh, workspace. Um, I also hide the package.lock JSON file. And this is something that I toggle between uh, true and false every once in a while, which is hiding the node modules. So right now, um, because I commented that setting out, if we go to a specific folder, you're going to notice the node modules um, is visible. So you can sort of go in. So this is something that I like to toggle on and off depending on, you know, if I'm running into any issues with the NPM or anything like that. Now the next settings to really take a look at here are the terminal settings. So there was a point where I was using VS Code and iTerm2, but I decided that you know having both applications open was kind of unnecessary. So I started using the integrated terminal inside of VS Code. So uh, what I usually have is I have the app running on this right terminal, and then here is where I usually do like my git status, git diff, you know, any other commands that I need to. And so I had to customize my terminal a little bit just to uh, get it to look the way I wanted it to. So I changed the font size. Cursor blinking is set to true. So this is for, you know, it's just a uh, way for me to know where which editor I'm in. So I can, you know, go to the left or the right editor and whichever one is blinking is obviously where I am. Just a little bit of customization for the terminal so that um, it looks good enough so that I don't need to open up iTerm2 show tabs. So if I were to set this to false, then it's not going to show these other tabs over here. But again, I like having multiple tabs open. Um, the status bar is visible. So that's this thing right over here. It shows uh, which branch I'm working on as well as, you know, uh, the mode of Vim. So right now I'm in insert mode, then I'm in normal mode, along with a couple of other things. Icon theme. So this is a icon theme extension that I downloaded called uh, material icon theme. So uh, if you notice that, you know, this git file has this git icon, you know, this package.json file has this node.js icon. That's what this icon theme is doing. Oh, and this one is also pretty cool. Uh, so let me just show you guys what it's doing. So if I open up the folders, right, and say I select this, whatever. And then what you want, what you can usually do is go, um, you can press down, 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 up, up, up. Uh, right arrow, left arrow, things like that to traverse through the files here. But what I wanted to do was do this with Vim commands because I don't like moving away from the home row, with the home row again being ASDF, JKL, semicolon. So when your hand is already on the home row, moving to the arrow keys is kind of annoying. So um, basically these two settings uh, ensure that I can use uh, Vim commands. Uh, you know, I'm using J to go down, K to go up, uh, open files or folders, right? Um, for example, I can go like this and it's going to open the file. The final thing I want to go over is the color theme. Right now, um, my workbench is on the GitHub dark default color theme. And one thing I had to update uh, to get this to work the way I wanted it to was to add a terminal foreground. This text right now is using that color. So if I didn't have this, um, it's going to look, it's it's kind of hard to read. And that was what the default Git uh, GitHub dark did for some reason. So I just added this one thing in to make it easier to read. Now on other occasions, I like to use the Groovebox dark material theme. So I can change the color theme by pressing um, Command Shift P to open all commands, select color theme, and then go to uh, GitHub material dark, I think. 
And yeah, that's going to be it for today. Hopefully now you guys have a little bit of an understanding of how to customize your Visual Studio code. If you enjoyed this video, then leave a like for the YouTube algorithm because that really does help me out. And consider subscribing for more suboptimal content every single week. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.